out of town. Uh, I live out east, Beth Page. And uh, I've developed a reputation for always being happy. Where's my happy people? All right, well, let me, let me tell you something. Being happy takes a lot of hard work. Am I right, sir? You look like you haven't smiled since 1973. <laughs> I tell you what, here, here, here's some of my secrets. Every morning I read motivational literature, I listen to inspirational music, and I smoke a bowl of opiated hash. <laughs> yeah. Relax, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I never read before noon. <laughs> So I'm, I'm feeling good now, but uh, at a very uh, rough start to the year, back in January, um, I rode in an ambulance for the very first time. The scariest night of my life, and I, and I hope it's the last time I ever get arrested for stealing an ambulance. <laughs> no, I was rushed to the hospital with a 29 heart rate. My electrical system shut down. I had to get a pacemaker. Anybody else have a pacemaker? No, just the old bald Jew on stage telling jokes. Um, let me tell you, pacemaker is great. It's a it's a battery that's planted inside my chest, and uh, it's got two wires that go down into my heart. And as soon as the pacemaker sees that the heart rate goes below 60, it kicks in. My heart rate goes back up, and I get an erection. <laughs> And what's really cool, if I shove a cable up my ass, I can charge my cell phone. <laughs> I tell you that, the battery on this thing is powerful. This morning, I helped my next door neighbor start his car by connecting his jumper cables to my nipples. <laughs> hey, try to start it! <laughs> so I'm very proud to be a bald American. See, yeah, I know we have something in common for a while. Now, uh, I lost my hair at a very early age, which always made me look a lot older than I was. My friends used to pay me to go to the store for them and buy them beer. <laughs> I was the most popular kid in third grade. <laughs> when I was 18, my hair really started coming out, so um, I went to this dermatologist who gave me weeks and weeks worth of hormone shots, and it worked out great. My hair didn't grow back, but I made a lot of money in tips waitressing at Hooters. See, when I was 18, there was no hooters. That's very weird of me to say. Anyway, uh, you know, a hair loss is genetic. Unfortunately, my 30-year-old son is going through the exact same journey that I went through. Uh, I feel bad for him. The only advice I can give him is, Jonathan, when you serve the drinks, arch your back, you make more money in tips. <laughs> uh, my kids drive me nuts. My, uh, my daughter Liz plays in a rock band, and whenever she comes over for dinner, she plays her songs with the silverware. Like Liz, will you stop banging on the table? She's like, I can't help it, Dad. I'm the drummer. I'm like, oh yeah? Well, you don't see your brother crapping on the table, and he's an asshole. <laughs> I worry about my kids. And my, my kids are adults. But those of you who have adult kids, it doesn't, they're still your babies, right? You still worry about them. Last night I was hanging out with my son at the end of the night. He said, Jonathan, do me a favor. When you get home, can you text me? He's like, Dad, I live in the basement. <laughs> yeah, I love him. He just moved back in with us. I love him, but there's no more privacy. Now when I want to have sex, I have to wait for my son and wife to leave the house. <laughs> Where's my friend with the Giants cap? There you go. I got to tell you, you get this. I love the hat, by the way. You ever notice that whenever you wear a piece of clothing with a team logo on it, uh, some people automatically think it gives them the right to come up to you and start a pep rally? Right? right? Yesterday I'm in Manhattan. I'm on 42nd Street and 8th Avenue. I'm wearing my Giants cap. This strange guy, never saw him before in my life, comes up to me, gets right in my face, points at the hat, and he goes, hey, hey, Giants, baby, Giants, baby, the fucking G man at back. And let me tell you, Dable did a great job with Buffalo. Now he knows what to do with, with Sackquad and Daniel Jones. The defense is holding him. Hey, Phillies off the 6 and 0, but if they can beat him at least once and make a wild card, I think they can, I think they can, I think they can win it all. What do you think? I said, I think you should help the lady that's getting mugged, officer. <laughs> Go Big Blue! <laughs> oh, yeah. 
So on the way home yesterday, I'm riding on the Long Island Railroad, and uh, I noticed that next to the door is a, a box with lettering on it that says, in case of emergency, break glass. And I'm thinking, really? If there's an emergency? Who has time for a Jewish wedding? <laughs> and I notice there's a lady sitting over there, and she's not breathing, and I'm like, ah, 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 Simon Duffin, Lazo Duffin, Simon Duffin, Milo Duffin. <laughs> yeah, she didn't make it. Yeah, I am uh, very proud to be Jewish. Do we have any other Hebrews in the house? All right, all right, my brothers, how you doing? I was raised in a very Orthodox household. My parents were so Jewish, they wouldn't even let me play lacrosse. Oh, fuck you, what are you judging me now? <laughs> I had to play with Star of David. It's hard being Jewish. Every holiday there's something we're not allowed to have. At Passover, no bread. Yom Kippur, no food. Hanukkah, no Christmas. I, I used to have a tough time with Christmas. When I was a kid, I was afraid of Santa Claus because he never came to my house. I asked my friends, I said, Mom, Dad, how come Santa Claus never comes to our house? My mother said, well, that's because we're Jewish. I said, really? Even Santa Claus hates the Jews? <laughs> How sad is it to be 10 years old and think that Santa Claus was an anti-Semite? Maybe his name's not even Claus. Maybe it's Klaus. Come to think of it, what's the name of his head reindeer with the red nose? Yeah, close enough. All right, you're getting a little uncomfortable. This story has a happy ending. When I was 11, my parents took me to the mall. They made me sit on Santa's lap to take a picture. I was scared shit. <laughs> I said, Santa! My name is Les, and I'm Jewish. And then he looked at me, and he whispered in my ear, my name's Irving, so am I. <laughs> so I'm in recovery. Yeah, I actually, I actually stand, I started today, 15 minutes ago, I'm a Facebook addict. I haven't gone on Facebook in 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm so addicted to Facebook, when I wanna have sex with my wife, I send her an invite. How sad is that? And she always responds exactly the same way my friends respond when I invite them to one of my comedy shows. She always gives me a maybe, and then she never comes. That's actually a clean joke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know what I hate about Facebook? I, I hate when people give you unsolicited advice on your own page. You ever get that? I, like, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, I posted a picture of me sipping Kettle One Vodka. I love Kettle One, it's my favorite vodka, right? One of my friends comments, you should try Grey Goose. I'm thinking, fuck you, it's my page. I, I, don't want, I like Kettle One, go do it on your own page. So I got even with him. A couple of days later, I noticed he posted a picture of him kissing his wife. I commented, you should try your next door neighbor Sylvia. And bring her a bottle of Kettle One. I really hate when people give me a hard time. Uh, last Sunday, I did a major shopping run at Stop and Shop. Uh, I spent a few hundred dollars. Uh, I got online on the express lane. I do it all the time. The lady behind me starts flipping out. Hey, mister, can't you read the sign? It says 10 items or less. I said, yeah, I'm less. <laughs> I'm less, Megan. Thanks, everybody. Back to Johnny Love here.